Hi, Tom with Heritage Electrical. In this video, we're looking at cheaper alternatives to some of the consumer unit gear that we would preferably fit. But with wholesalers having potential supply issues moving forward, what with Brexit and the pandemic that we've had, and also customers that are maybe on a little bit more of a budget, we want to find a decent alternative product, like I say, to some of the consumer unit gear that we like to fit. So today we're looking at Verso. Now we've we're using Verso, it's the same manufacturer as some very good heaters, electric heaters that we like to fit where people want electric heating from a company called Ascot. So it's part of that company, so we thought we'd uh, give it a go because we know that the Ascot products are very good. So if we take the board out of the box, uh, it's got a good weight to it, it feels solid. You can see there's a range of different knockout sizes for different grommets and glands around the perimeter of the board. Here's some of the RCBOs. This is what they look like in the flesh. Now they're not miniature RCBOs, but I believe they might be looking to develop some of those. The switch has got a good click to it for what it's worth, but we'll find out how they test out later on. Now, although it's not a miniature RCBO, they've actually given us a little bit more space in the top of the board to make connections um, compared with some other budget manufacturers. There's also a few things that come free, uh, whereas other manufacturers might charge for them. For example, rear knockout grommets, tail clamp there on the double pole main switch you get a few blanks with it as well so yeah it's a nice nice touch and the Hager solid blanks fit in the board as well fit on the on the din rail now one issue that we did come across was the fact that all of the knockouts are quite strongly welded to the you know main body of the board and so when we're knocking those out uh, with some of our other preferred manufacturers they knock out easily and they don't distort the actual frame of the board uh, when you knock them out either with a hammer or I, I like to use a, like a nail punch on the welds whereas in this instance the the fact that the, the knockouts have welded quite strongly to the board resulted in a little bit of bending on the knockouts at the back of the board and in fact on the knockout at the bottom where he intended to take the tails into the board uh, as we were knocking that out, unfortunately the weld has come loose on the on the corner of the board there, so we're going to have to take that board back and exchange it for a new one. So in future, if we use this manufacturer again, we instead of knocking out the knockouts, we will use a hole saw on them and, and drill those out just to be a little bit more gentle. Now another problem that I came across actually on the replacement board was that the, the, the plastic housing which contains the neutral bar and the earth bar was loose in the metal enclosure and I presume that it just needed clicking in. You see at the side there there's a couple of ears that click into the metal part of the board but in fact the plastic there's like three three or four plastic tags on the back which locate in the metal board. One of those appeared to be oversized and so I had to actually take it out and just use a some snips or a Stanley knife just to shave a bit of plastic off that and then once I've done that the plastic housing then located in the metal board but again it just sort of added a few minutes uh, onto the installation time and just a little bit of inconvenience so it's just worth pointing out so let's look at a quick bit of testing we'll do some rcd tests so you notice here that we've got four spare ways in the board actually once the buzz bar was screwed into place those hager blanks don't fit but you can see that you're provided with a uh, little plastic caps which go on empty slots in the buzz bar and then we're just going to use the provided uh, blanks to cover up those spare ways and ensure that the customer can't get their hands on the, the buzz bar and live connections. So if we look at some of these RCD tests, so we do three different tests on the RCD just to ensure that it trips in the desired time. Now the RCD is rated at 30 milliamps. We do three tests. We do a half times the rated current and we need to make sure that the RCD doesn't trip um, so that we avoid nuisance tripping. We do a test at its rated current, which is 30 milliamps, and we do a test at five times its rated current. Now the five times is what we note down here, so this is what I'm noting down, and this trip needs to happen within 40 milliseconds. Uh, and so we can see here that the values are not only pretty consistent across the board, you see more or less within a millisecond of each other. And with some of the cheaper manufacturers, you might get more variation in those times. Um, now, it's fine as long as they trip in the desired time, it's fine, but maybe that's an indication of the quality of the manufacturing and testing process. 
with the more expensive brands that the readings are more consistent. So in short, would we use this manufacturer of consumer units and RCBOs again? Answer would be yes, if uh, budget was a major consideration. But what we have is a list of tried and tested products that we would prefer to fit because we know that they're just not going to fail. Are you going to you know, have a decent lifespan from them with no faults, no problems? So yes, we would. You know, the, it's a decent weight board. The RCBOs appear to test out fine, but there's just been a little bit of extra time involved in the installation here. So the money that uh, you would be saving on the components, overall you would still be saving money, but there's a little bit more time gone into the installation because of the issues that we've encountered this time, although should we use this board again, we know what to watch out for. 